Well hello there, I hope you're having as much fun as I am. I just wanted to bring you up to date with regard to the latest state of play with my veterinary clock project. So here's the front of the clock. Uh, by now I had hoped to get all the meters displaying things furiously, but I'm afraid I got a little bit sidetracked uh, on the back side of the clock, so let's have a look at that. So first of all we've got a 5 volt uh, regulated power supply and then over on this side we've got an Arduino Mega at the bottom these are the five switches going through to the front panel and of course we've got the meters on top of the Arduino Mega we've got a prototyping board and that's got the electronics that we're going to use to drive the meters and this is one of the Arduino Mega boards that we modified my chum Ivan at work uh, so that it runs directly off the 5 volt supply so we're running everything, the meters, the LEDs uh, and the Arduino is all running off the same power supply. Now the thing is with regard to the power supply I just had uh, a cable coming out that I plugged into the wall and that got to be really annoying walking around dragging the cable with me and also plugging in and out the USB port to the controller at the back so I decided to start focusing on the back uh, on the panels and things uh, I should point out originally I would thought that the clock from the front to the back here would be 8 inches but once I had made this prototype I realised that was just too far so if we look down here you can see that I've actually decided it should be 6.5 inches from the very front to the very back so this panel here is going to be the where the true back will lay but of course the prototype is still stuck there um, so I started thinking about how to lay out the back and what I wanted to do was to have a power socket I've got my three major control switches and I'm going to use these to turn on and off the lights and the sounds and things like that I'm going to test mode and then the USB port so I can just plug my computer in and reprogram the clock without having to go into the insides uh, as you see <laughs> there's a slight problem here in that uh, I can't get the USB port in because of this temporary post so I'm going to chop that out in a few minutes um, this is arranged so that the middle switch here is directly underneath the uh, the vacuum tube on the top uh, and there's a exactly the same amount of distance from that side of the this panel to the edge and from this side of the panel to the edge uh, so it's all actually turning out to be quite aesthetically balanced as it were uh, and I'm just starting to work on the wiring harness as you see so I've wired the three switches up and what I do is I colour code, I put a little bit of shrink wrap on the wires going to the switches and that way when I make the harness at the other end I've got the colour coded wires so it's easy for me to work out what's going on so the next step is going to be to wire up these five switches uh, into the controller and also to wire up the meters into the controller and then we'll really be ready to uh, rock and roll and uh, start cooking on gas but for the moment, let's plug the uh, little rascal in. And you can see we've got the LEDs working now. And at the minute, so I'm going to turn this light off so, it's, uh, so we can see it a little bit better. So just experimenting with some different patterns here. Uh, just trying different colours. Oops. Be careful there. Initially I was just trying to have one LED going round uh, and now I'm going to try different rates with the, the white LED. Then we're going to a different pattern. Now I've got two LEDs going round. I'm just changing the colours to see what the effects are. Two white LEDs and this is where we start to change the speed again and now I'm sort of thinking that I might try different effects like having all of the LEDs white but just one of them red for instance uh, so there's a whole host of things we can do here but before we do that the next thing is to get the USB working so I can program it uh, easily and then to wire up the meters and uh, get the meters going oh and one other thing that I meant to mention on the back here 
uh, on the top of that prototyping board there's going to be another one at the end uh, and that's going to have the real time clock and also a temperature sensor. I just uh, got a, a temperature sensor that's accurate to a quarter of a degree for a couple of dollars from uh, Adafruit. So I'm going to slap that on there so I can get a warning if the thing heats up inside. Really it's just an opportunity to play with these things. And then finally there'll be the board that Dwayne Benson is working on along with a couple of others uh, on the E-Times and EDN websites. And we're trying to make a sound effects card that would uh, run on I2C. So ultimately there's going to be uh, four boards here. There's going to be the Mega on the bottom, the large prototyping board that contains all the electronics to drive the meters, a smaller proto prototyping board that's got the real-time clock and the temperature measurement, and then one other small board on top that will have the sound effects card. And then the speaker is going to go in the back up here, uh, point facing backwards. And the sort of effects we're thinking about are maybe clockwork or machinery uh, or the, you know, the tick tock sound and the whole thing about the veterinary clock is that the tick tock sounds irregular so it's like tick tock tick tock tick tock tick tock tick tock tick tock so although it keeps perfect time the tick tocks are, are a bit unusual so that's the state of play at the minute. Uh, so I shall leave you now and I shall get back to my uh, soldering iron. You can see this is the kitchen table and uh, you know, uh, I'm deep in the mists of it at the moment. So I shall see you later. Have a great day.